We're still here at Interop 2010, Las Vegas, and I'm here with my uh, buddy and colleague, Rick Moy, and we first met about a year and a half ago at the PCI community meetings, right? Uh, where we were both leading a PCI SIG. That's right. Uh, and by the way, how did that SIG work out for you? That worked out great. great. You, uh, How's yours working out? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, we did not complete the um, schedule as like your group did, so uh, I lost that bet. So congratulations on getting your guidance out. And, uh, no, seriously, uh, you must feel really good about that. Yeah, it's always good to have an achievement or two. <laughs> what SIG was that? Uh, that was the wireless uh, security guide. Yeah, so check out the great wireless SIG guides that came out. Uh, phenomenal guides that came out. <laughs> uh, not exactly straightforward process. So, actually, you and I were talking about the phenomenal study that uh, NSS Labs came out with around the Aurora study, right? So. Uh, can you tell us what NSS Labs does and uh, tell us about the smoking gun findings that made me just like giggle with like Lee? Right. So NSS Labs is an independent uh, security product analysis firm. Uh, we are an interesting combination between an information services uh, organization, uh, like an analyst firm, uh, that actually does testing of the products. So instead of uh, offering up opinions, we test the products, uh, gloves off, uh, not just looking for what the products can do, but also what they cannot do. Uh, think of it as a security gap analysis uh, to help uh, CIOs and CISOs understand uh, where the holes may be in their security defenses so they can uh, take uh, steps to remediate those. So there were Aurora findings, which uh, should have generated a uh, Pompeii-like um, wave of controversy. Uh, Achieve some of that, but I mean, when I heard it from you directly, it just blew my mind. I mean, it just, I love it. Yeah. So, what were the sort of highlights of the uh, Aurora study? Well, so just to, to set the stage, the uh, Google Aurora attack, uh, which had been going on since at least December, if not earlier, was made public in uh, January, I think uh, January 21st, around then. Um, was the most publicized uh, attack uh, carried out since con con the Configur uh, down at up uh, uh, botnet. And essentially what that was, was a exploit against uh, IE6 vulnerability, which allowed the attacker to deliver a malicious payload, uh, which was essentially a, a Trojan horse that uh, allowed the, the remote attackers to control those machines. and and then a route into, uh, into the organizations. Uh, over 100 defense uh, and high-tech companies were uh, breached uh, by this attack. Uh, and the reality is that attacks like this against vulnerabilities in operating systems and browsers happen on a daily basis. There are thousands of these vulnerabilities discovered every year. So you had a very simple hypothesis, right? Which was, can you trust the security tools to uh, mitigate this risk, or are you better off just patching? Well, that that is the the question on the tip of, 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 uh, of the tongue for every uh, CIO. Uh, the security products which I've installed, can I rely on them to buy me extra time and act as a virtual patch, uh, or do I need to marshal uh, the team to come in this weekend and install the, the patch from Microsoft on 50,000 desktops, which is no small uh, task. Uh, and the findings, uh, just to jump to the, the, the smoking gun finding, was that uh, you cannot rely on the security products to protect you against that threat. Uh, there were six different uh, attack vectors, which uh, we tested several of them and found that uh, six out of seven products only protected against one of those vectors, which means you're, you're still open. So the best publicized uh, cyber attack in the history of the world um, is still not completely addressed by your security vendor. And so, you know, uh, before uh, our colleague here, Matt, whipped out the cameras, like, you know, I had made the claim that configuration is often the best preventive control, right? And you la we laughed, right? Uh, but, you know, I think what your study finds is that even given the high prominent attack, right, uh, around the Aurora attack, we still can't rely on the security vendors to provide a mitigate, an effective mitigating control around that. That's yeah. essentially the gist of your findings. Well, that's the gist of the findings, uh, at least for the endpoint, yeah. right? Now, I wouldn't characterize configuration control as necessarily proactive in this case because to protect against this particular attack, you had to re uh, apply a patch that was released after the fact, so after the zero day. So, um, 
I wouldn't call it proactive, but certainly the hygiene of, of applying configuration and patches is, is, is critical. The other... Um, and, and just to clarify, right, I mean, uh, so uh, from a security practitioner perspective, we want to prevent bad things from happening. And when they do occur, or if it does exist, we want to detect, quickly detect, correct. Right. Did the, uh, of the six uh, uh, tools that you tested, did they at least detect and uh, help correct for the uh, flaw? Or uh, were they oblivious to uh, even the exploit? Well, that's, that's an interesting question. We saw a, a variety of behaviors. Some of the products had no clue what was going on. Others saw that something happened and they simply crashed. Um, and one of the products uh, actually saw that something happened, but it was after the fact. And so it threw up an alert saying, threat detected, but the threat was already running in the background. So, I mean, it, at least they knew they got owned, but they were telling the user that they were protected. So, not a good story. That was misleading. Um, so what was your uh, takeaway out of all of this? I mean, by the way, I, I think it's just a phenomenal piece of work. Uh, well, they, what was they, your takeaway from uh, that exercise? Um, the first takeaway is that I, I, I pretty much ensured that I'll never be invited to a Christmas party by an antivirus vendor. Um, the, the other takeaway is that the, the vendors are generally not focusing on the exploits or the vulnerabilities. They're looking at the malware that's being delivered by and large, and that's really too late uh, in, in the attack cycle. You really need to be looking at uh, at the vulnerabilities or the exploits, because there's fewer of those, and there's uh, millions of samples uh, per year, and it's just getting to be an impossible race. Um, the, other, the other thing that I'll hold out is that we have not yet tested the uh, network appliances, which is another place uh, where these attacks could be thwarted. Um, and I've got slightly higher hopes for the network security guys than uh, than the AV uh, vendors. For uh, and, and that makes a lot of sense to me, right? I mean, from a, a caloric uh, from a caloric perspective, it is a lot better to put a preventive control at the network right, right. than to uh, marshal and mobilize a patch of fifty thousand systems. I mean, uh, what would, I, I would hope that the, that will have yeah. better results. Well, uh, thank you so much, Rick, for uh, sure. sharing that uh, phenomenal piece of work that I, I'm embarrassed to admit I didn't catch uh, the first time around. So uh, we got it straight from our uh, yeah. mouth and uh, expect more another interview like this uh, in the future. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Jane. Good hanging out.